all your bearware needs. So the breeze will be helping the team moving to your right as you look up high, and that will be UIC in the first half. The ball carries all the way down here to the corner flag and nearly hit it. We'll get a goal kick here in the first 10 seconds for the Flames from downtown Chicago. For UIC, Lauren Kaiser, a third-year sophomore out of Santa Rosa Beach, California. She has shut out UIC's last three opponents. Valley Goalkeeper of the Week on October the 10th. And the Flames will boot it back to her. UIC in the red, Missouri State in the white today in the heart of the Missouri State University campus here in Springfield, Missouri. Flames reverse and see if they can work something down this near side. With the ball from Yelena Spielich. Now downfield to the Bears defensive unit. And a whistle as a flame went down there. UIC coached in its second season by David Nikolich. He came to the Flames program after nine years as an associate head coach at Northwestern. Helped lead the Wildcats to four straight NCAA berths from 2015 to 18, Sweet 16 and 2016. Before that, he coached at Milwaukee as a top assistant. And out for a throw in now for the Bears who are working into this wind and Camille Day from the Darden Prairie area of St. Louis. 48 saves on the year and just 12 goals allowed. So a save percentage of 800. Flames will have a throw in. And a strong throw with the wind helping it and a header just misses. That's into the side of the goal. Kirk Nelson taking over for Rob Brewer. Rob was Missouri State's only women's soccer coach dating back to the mid-1990s before his retirement after last year. Now the Flames again with a little advancement there off of a bare defender. The Flames slips down and Bears get control of the ball. After today, Missouri State just one remaining match. That's at Illinois State on October 23rd. And Missouri State has never won a Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship in women's soccer. They know how important today and the final match will be in their history of their program. There are some factors in play today as to whether Missouri State could at least clinch a share of the Valley title. So really no need to go there. No. Just take care of your own business and, and then see what happens on the scoreboard. Through the traffic, UIC will back it up to the defensive line. Eight senior players from Missouri State were honored in pregame ceremonies. They had a team dinner in the Alumni Center that was well attended. Coach Nelson talked to us about that before the match today. There was a full-blown party down <laughs> in the parking lot today. There goes down for a UIC foul and being taken down there is Abby Couch. Bears with a free kick from Jenna Anderson. Into the win. She keeps it low. Little bit of space, top of the D for Missouri State. Now looking to get the ball through the defensive unit, but not quite. One attacker coming in, and the ball is guided in to Camille Day.
And out to the far side, throw in coming for the Flames. On two Missouri State players, Grace O'Keefe, Haley Chambliss, four goals apiece. The entire UIC team has only eight goals this season. That's in 13 matches. UIC most recently a scoreless tie with Northern Iowa. And on the comparison side by side, the Bears a little more game action and more goals. Of course, more shots on goal and saves as well. The goals against average by both teams, just very, very good. There's a foul, UIC foul, that may have some further sanctions here. No card for Mandy Ellsworth, but Missouri State is going to get a free kick going in here. May actually be a good thing to be going into the wind on this. See if you can get the air currents right and <laughs> sli slip it in uh, below the top bar. Our friend Jan Stolle always talks about keeping the ball low when it's windy. Here it comes. And it's kept very low. And right back out. Actually, looked like it went off one of the blockers for the Flames. So seven minutes in nearly, and Lauren Kaiser will put it back in play for UIC. Grace O'Keefe, Joey Fosno tied for the team lead for most shots on Missouri State with 32. O'Keefe tied with Carly Ronick on assist with three. And O'Keefe is tied for first in the Valley in points. They have great defense, but you also need to score goals. Back down for the Flames, and the chase is on, but they will get there. UIC with a win over Illinois State 2-0, lost to Valparaiso 4-0. A scoreless tie with Belmont, a 1-1 tie with Murray State. Shutout wins over Evansville 1-0 and Drake 2-0, and then the tie with Northern Iowa. Scoreless. That was Thursday. While Missouri State kind of rolling along here, they've lost only to Murray State 2-1 and tied Drake 1-1 in Des Moines, but six in the win column, Evansville 1-0, Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois 2-0, Valparaiso 1-0, Belmont 2-0, and Indiana State 1-0. I'm by and coming out now for a corner kick for UIC, first of the day. You can see the wind kind of carry that one closer toward the goal. They miss on the header. But they get a corner kick. Megan Bowman will place it. All-time scoring leader for her career now at UIC with 11 goals. And riding in front of the net. This one on its way and doesn't make it back today. Another shot deflected. They try to center. Keep it in the neighborhood, but the Bears' defense was tight. There were three really good blocks by Missouri State defensively that time. Throw in coming. UIC will take it. Caitlin Montague, junior from Orlando, Florida. Missouri State has already tripled its conference wins from last year's total, two last year, six this year. So there was not a 
overwhelming reason to believe that no. Missouri State would be in first place no. right now. They have just done it with the tough schedule that Kirk Nelson has told us about all season, which goes back to this past spring. Mm -hmm. And playing teams like Oklahoma State and Tulsa and St. Louis, to whom the Bears lost 7-0. Yeah. Down the line, that makes you better. That was a match back on September 1st. Ten minutes in and no score. And you just get the feeling that one might be maybe <laughs> might be enough. <laughs> We say it all the time, if you have good soccer, it's probably going to be one to nothing. Into the center, Flames will send that one back out and now down toward the flag. And it's a throw in for Missouri State. So far, very impressed by how aggressive the Flames are offensively. Seems like most of this match has been in the offensive end for UIC. Sideways. David Nikolic looking on there. Back out. So with no overtime anymore and a tie of possibility always on the table now. But you get one point for a tie, three points for a win. It, it just depends what the other teams behind you do. For Missouri State, they control their own destiny. A tie here for the Bears would kind of leave the door open mm -hmm. for Valparaiso today. Right. Valparaiso at Murray State. That one also started at 1 o'clock. And that's the one team that beat Missouri State. So a good matchup there with... Valparaiso sitting in second alone with 11, make that uh, 16 points. Southern Illinois with 14 points at 4-1 and 2. And Salukis hosting Illinois State also started at 1 o'clock. But one of the tiebreakers being head-to-head, -head, and Missouri State has already defeated Valparaiso and Southern Illinois, and Belmont. Now coming through, and Bears will attack, but Kaiser gets it out of there. So in the first 12 plus minutes, two shots for UIC. Shaw and Frerichs, no shots yet for Missouri State. Certainly the better looks have gone to UIC yeah. so far. Missouri State will get this one off of a foul. And a good place to bring in the free kick from for Grace O'Keefe. Pretty much kicking directly into the wind here. O'Keefe with goals against Tulsa, Evansville, Murray State, and Belmont. And they were game-winning goals against Evansville and Belmont. Here it comes for O'Keefe at the doorstep. And cleared out to the far side. Good work by Kaiser again. Good kick. You give yourself a chance here. Boy, just an extra six or eight yeah. inches, and that might have been above the hand. Out to the center. Look how fast Missouri State's defense gets back in place. Especially there from Gracie yeah. English. St. Louis University transfer. the Bear defenders, and now Missouri State gets in the way of this one with O'Keefe. And back to the center bearhead. Mm -hmm. 
Flames brought it down to Hannah Grizzik. And they will keep it in play as the Bear Reserves warm up there on the side. Here's the, the other right. matchup that has second place Valparaiso taking on Murray State today, and they're at about the same place we are with no score. You saw that goal attempt hit the, the side of the net. And an early close call there. We'll keep tabs on that from Murray, Kentucky. Big boot by Ronig, but no one home for Missouri State. Bouncer into Kaiser. So 15 minutes gone by here. Nothing, nothing. Kaiser second in the Missouri Valley Conference with the 0 0.8 goals against average. Third in the league in save percentage at 813. She saved a penalty kick against Eastern Kentucky. Alan McKenna Shaw. One of the great things that a keeper can have is saving a PK. Absolutely. <laughs> There's the Missouri State throw in. But not just yet. What's well, Andy Ellsworth have? Getting everybody lined up. Couldn't quite hear him. So every minute that passes by, Kaiser adding to her scoreless streak. Now over 352 minutes, not allowing a goal. Set a career best. And on down past the goal line, which will give us a corner kick now for UIC. It will be their second. Here's Bowman. Megan Bowman led the Flames with four goals last year. This year, second on the team in shots on goal and fourth in minutes played. Her liner comes in and Day gets both fists up there. And we'll get the throw in here for the Bears. Carly Ronig, the junior defender. The other way for Sabilich. And now the defenders close in, and the Bears will get this throw in. A little campaigning there. By from, both coaches. <laughs> from, and from Chopper Carrier, the freshman defender from Austin, Texas, with an all-name team candidate. Upper Carrier, up in her high school team, win three district championships. She was a team captain. Sister that played soccer at LSU. Flames throw in, and can they keep it? Nope, can't keep it in play. Lost control there, and Missouri State will have the goal kick. Front of the Missouri State bench. That's controlled by Ronig. He'll throw in again. Good clean takeaway there. 
for UIC, and that was Sibilic. Now one-on-one -on -one battle, and this is out off of the flame defender in Missouri State with a quick throw in. So Bielich last year played all 17 matches, 11 starts, started the last eight matches of the season. <laughs> 20 minutes gone by and Missouri State will place for a free kick. Watch for Missouri State, see if they can get something inside the box here. Right in front, and still the scramble for the ball. Shot went off a defender you saw there. Before making it back to Kaiser. Looking in on Valparaiso and Murray State, and the Racers get a goal in the first half. Murray State puts one in. That helps the Missouri State cause. Murray State is 3-2-2. Two, two. Valparaiso 5-1-1. One, and, one, and just one win behind Missouri State in the standings. Murray State does the Bears a favor here. The UIC and Missouri State men played soccer just yesterday in Chicago, and UIC got a first-half goal. Missouri State answered with three in the second half. And so the Missouri State men, who were picked to win the Valley, are still in first place mm -hmm. now as the men close in on the end of their regular season. Wouldn't that be something if both programs capture regular season titles. You're watching history today. We could talk about a serious history between these two women's programs, but it's the first ever meeting. <laughs> so yeah, first time ever between these two in women's soccer. UIC joining the Valley for this year, and the Bears are the seventh team that the Flames are facing for the first yeah. time this year. These are old mid-continent conference rivals, but that was before the arrival of women's soccer at Missouri State. You've had a UIC broadcast, but it was a few years ago. Uh, 31 <laughs> years ago was the last time I worked a game involving the Flames, and that was there were three that I did over a two-year span in like 1990 and 91. Nice. When the Flames came to Springfield for baseball and played at the old Metter Park. <laughs> which the park is still there. It's just not quite what it used to be. Here's the first substitution for Missouri State. Riley Smith, freshman from Platte City, Missouri, Platte County High School. She has a goal this year. It came against Tulsa. And for Rutherford. Rigby checking Chelsea in for Rigsby. UIC. Uh -huh. Mike, I also went to, to Chicago with Art Haynes, our dear friend who is still recovering from West Nile virus, in 1990. And uh, worked a couple of games there. And, I mean, the baseball field is just incredible. It, it's like a big league setting in downtown Chicago yeah. with the Chicago skyline all across the outfield fence, wow. and Art Haynes continues what is going to be a long recovery from West Nile virus. We're only about four weeks into his illness now, and it's been debilitating for him. There's been a GoFundMe set up by his friends, and we wish nothing but 
the very best for our dear friend and colleague, Art Haynes. We, we pray daily, and we know the prayers are being answered. Well, the shots, even at two apiece, been quiet after UIC got off to a relatively quick start on the two shots by Shaw and Frericks, but now O'Keefe and Couch, and O'Keefe's being a shot on goal. That was the one off of Kaiser's uh -huh, hand, uh -huh. off of the free kick. Flames trying to move the ball near sideline, far sideline, make that Missouri State defense move. I like the short, crisp passing by both teams on this windy afternoon. This will be a throw in. It barely missed the flag there. Missouri State with Gabby Schlapper throwing it in. Starting at forward today instead of mid. And a freshman from St. Charles, Missouri, in northwest St. Louis. Now into the box for the Flames. And they can't get it by Abby Couch there. Throw in coming from the far side. Missouri State University President Cliff Smart taking it in today. Rest for that wind that he is cooling things <laughs> off. Always great to see the president here. Strong throw in. And this one sails high. Coach, do you want this one? And we'll get a corner kick again for UIC. Grace Haynes checking in for UIC, senior out of Springboro, Ohio. Third corner for UIC, Missouri State still doesn't have any. And here it comes, right in there, and on by the goal. Foul called on UIC. This one hugs close to the goal. But Day just got yeah. put on her yeah. <laughs> face down, not on her back, I guess. Throw in here for UIC. Grace Haynes, the last two years, member of the Horizon League all academic team. Back in 2019, main to the Horizon League all freshman team. Dad was a soccer player at Bowling Green. Back to midfield and s no, still <laughs> not quite. With more subs. Sophia Jamie, freshman from Valparaiso, Indiana, a transfer from Valparaiso. And she's the scoring leader right. for UIC with three goals this year. And no assists, but she's still the team leader in points with six. Joey Fosno in for the Bears. She's the freshman that got off to a really fast start this season. Three goals, one against SEMO, one against Drake, one against Northern Iowa. 32 shots, 20 shots on goal. Tied with O'Keefe for shots. And that's the third most in the Valley yeah. with those shots. We found out watching her early on, she does not mind the contact.
Back to the center for UIC and downfield. Remember Curtin Nelson telling us earlier this year just what a fast adjustment Fosno made to the college game. In Murray, Valparaiso gets it even. And that was out of a corner kick and a little second chance rebound there for Valparaiso. And they're tied 1-1 now. To the center. Now in from the corner of the box and well high and left. UIC with Hannah Grizzick getting back in. Goal kick for Camille Day. Good clean steal. The other way for the Flames. Back to the corner of the box. Kind of a dangerous place to send it back to Day that way, but she makes good. Thought the Flames might attack the box a little more that time. They started to, then pushed it back out and just couldn't get stuff reset. Bears upfield. And there's a nice pass, but the next pass misses its mark. The recipient cut the other way there. Riley Collette is going to check in for the Flames. David Nikolic going to his bench quite often here in the first half. Throw in here for UIC. Down to 13 minutes to go in the first half. And a little foul there is called by Andy Ellsworth for placement for the Flames. The Bears have nine, five, and two with eight shutout wins. They've got a total of nine shutouts this season. One of those a zero zero draw. They're five, three, and one at home. Here comes another corner for UIC. Zero zero draw was the season opener August the 18th against Central Arkansas. The wind bending it in toward the goal. It's caught on the fly by day. How many times do you see a keeper do that? All of a sudden, he or she, when you're watching a men's match, of course, they just come out of nowhere, and they're the ones that get the hands on the ball. <laughs> we stay scoreless here in Springfield. But again, the, the reason these two teams have had such success has been the play of their defense and their keepers that we talked about in the pregame. Look at Camille Day. The joust there will give us a foul on UIC. That's called on Jamie. Camille Day in 2021 as a sophomore made three appearances, two starts. Started the season opening loss at Murray State. Freshman year, three appearances with one start, but boy, it's all clicked for her this season. Kylie Jackson with the restart for the Bears, one of seven seniors plus uh, an eighth player that will not be back next year that were honored before the match. And off 
for a throw in for UIC. Champ was taking a tumble right in front of the Missouri State bench. Field. Here comes Day. She had that timed well with Jamie very close by, but she knew she wasn't quite in range. You mentioned Kylie Jackson a second ago. She has the most minutes of any bear, 1,374. Jen Anderson, the only other player for the Bears with over 1,300 minutes. And Jackson's played the full 90 minutes for seven straight matches. Never comes out. <laughs> That's amazing. She probably likes that it's a little cooler today. You better believe that. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a nice fall, just not much rain, which is okay. Had a little bit in Springfield overnight. Just enough to settle the dust, really. <laughs> Southwest Missouri here is in varying conditions of drought now. It's worse over toward the Kansas line. Contact, no whistle they play on. Eight forty-five to go first half. We'll see if either side can break through before halftime. Get one on the board. Madison Ferris in for UIC. Richard freshman from Bellevue, Washington. And Jade Loftness, one of the seniors, honored before the match today out of Overland Park, Kansas. For Missouri State. Back the Bears way. Still looking to establish control here. And it's just back and forth. From one box to the other box and not much else going on inside the boxes in the first half. Pick up here for Day. Bear foul there as a flame player went down, and that was 17, Megan Bowman. There was contact by Loftus. Flames will place for a free kick with the wind helping. Turf and untouched the other way for the Bears. There is Kirk Nelson. You have to love what he has done so far with his team pick eighth and sitting in first place. Several second place finishes in the Missouri Valley Conference regular season under Rob Brewer, who retired at the end of last year, but no regular season Valley titles. That could change between now and October the 23rd. Oh. And hold on. This is going to be called, and Flames will get one going in here. Ronick not happy with that call. He didn't think so, neither did uh, these Bear fans. Okay. UIC will get the free kick. Here it comes. Right in, top of the D. And that'll be a flame foul. 5.25 left in the half. There's the 
Yeah, a little extra push. The advantage gained there by Sophia Jamie. Since the beginning of the 2021 season, Abby Couch and Carly Ronick have started every match. It's 33 in total up to today. Not quite a save there. Missouri State will get the throw in. Kind of over the top. Day comes out. Ball is loose. Day's got to get back and does. Meanwhile, the Bear defense keeps it away from the goal, and Missouri State ends up with this throw in. Kicked it off a of UIC player's last touch there by Grizzit. So off of Day, and then she retreats. And the Bears. I would say Missouri State got very fortunate that time. And that quickly, UIC got a bit of control uh -huh. and got the ball back in today. Four minutes to go before the half. Oh, flag comes up. And it's all, well, it will be a Missouri State throw in on the UIC, or free kick on the UIC foul. John always talks about the first five minutes, the final five minutes. We're in the final five here. Chipped in and back out where it came from there. UIC turns it upfield. Bears back down with Jackson against Two flames covering her. It's Bowman and Rigby, just stride for stride. Throw incoming, and a Bears having to stretch there a bit to keep those cramps away. Grace O'Keefe. This will roll all the way hmm. off the far side, and Missouri State will throw it in. Appreciate the ball girls being here today to get everything put back in play quickly. See Kirk Nelson directing offense from the bench area. Kind of positioned there for the Bears, but there is Kaiser. So for the long time, the shots were even at two, but UIC now leading in shots at 6-2. O'Keefe looking for Fosno there and just missed the connection, and we're down to 100 seconds to go in the first half. Chopper Carrier with the throw in. Now the Bears will get this one. Now it's a free kick. One Bear attacker, Loftness there. Back to midfield with a minute to go. They'll get a look. It's Loftness, center to the top, kind of some open space, and Missouri State is going to get a corner kick. 45 seconds left. They've got plenty of time here. This will be their first corner of the day. The wind will be behind this kick. Right at the near post. High 
into the air, and the wind holds that one up. Down to 12 seconds. And we'll count down the final 10 and go into halftime scoreless here in Springfield. UIC and Missouri State playing in women's soccer for the first time ever. And it is nothing, nothing at halftime. In women's college soccer on the Valley on ESPN. And here we go in the final 45. Drake has the victory today over Indiana State. That one is over. So Drake improves to 2-2-4. Two, two, and four. And Indiana State drops to 2-4-2. Two, and, two. and it's all on that point system. Three points for a win, one for a tie on your standing. Those two teams are fighting for the number eight spot. Throw incoming, so Drake with the advantage now in that eight spot. To the center, and there's Day. Example of the win, they didn't boot that one that hard. She booted it all the way past midfield. Bears keep it in play. And head up field, and the race is on. And Sometimes you just play a little interference. Yep. <laughs> Get it out of there. Breeze a little stronger down at field level now. Lauren Kaiser has the goal kick for UIC. Back to the center and back and forth, and the Bears get a bit of control. You see five Bears on the move here with six defenders close by and the keeper, and this one will miss wide to the left with a soft touch. Tracy English. There from Missouri State. Her goal kick comes out to midfield. O'Keefe is there for the Bears. And it's cleared off to the side for a Missouri State throw in. Simple passes, cut the angles, don't force the ball. Make a lot of eye contact with your teammates. By the way, Murray State and Valparaiso went into halftime at 1-1. Continue to keep tabs on that. Coming the other way now for UIC. <laughs> to the center and the Flames send it back to Kaiser again. And out the far side for a Missouri State throw in. And no control there. UIC will take this one. Keep the ball on the ground, simplify the game, communicate loudly and often. it low top of the box shot misses a little high and wide left just 
just above the mark there. Missouri State empty again. We stay scoreless early in the second half in Springfield. Contact, no yeah, whistle. Several sets of feet on the ball there. Now down toward the corner for UIC. They'll try to center. It's hit into the side of the net. A corner kick coming up. He did indeed get the touch there. So another corner, the fourth of the day for the Flames. Coming for Sophia Jamie. And a short one. Bears step in. Flames will have this throw. To the center. Three defenders back for the Bears. Header for the Flames, and a whistle. This will be a Missouri State foul. Talked earlier about Sophia James. She's not a transfer from Valparaiso. She went to Valparaiso High School in Valparaiso, Indiana. Now leading them to conference and sectional championships and regional finals as a senior. We had a fun one last night in our volleyball match. Missouri State against Belmont, and Belmont had a player who was from Belmont with two L's high school in Indiana. Okay. So it was in the cards that she was going to go to <laughs> Belmont University. I guess so. Alexi Diaz here with the free kick for UIC with a three-player wall for the Bears. And up high and knocked up and over by Day. That was picture perfect by Day. The save of the day for Missouri State. And a good trajectory on this ball. To time your jump perfectly, and she did. Can't jump too early. You can't jump too late. Now off of the corner. Boy, if Missouri State wins this match, we will go back to remember that save. 37 and a half minutes left in the match. Kirk Nelson appreciates the effort of his keeper. Yeah, you had a rare three-set volleyball match there. Tonight. <laughs> Most of yours go five. <laughs> we went an hour and 12 minutes with Missouri State and Belmont yesterday after Missouri State volleyball had gone five sets in four straight matches. Here's Day to come out and make a stop. And that tied the school record ever. <laughs> for most consecutive five-set matches. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and they also had played ten straight that had gone at least four sets, and that also tied a school record. Wow. But the records weren't broken. Battle for the ball. Now the Flames had Jamie in position there. This one stays in play. Looked like it was headed out, but the wind blew it back in. UIC just appears a lot more active offensively. Players on both sides go down. Now downfield hugging that touch line, and UIC with a pass, and Kaiser just got it out of there ahead of Joey Fosno. Valparaiso gets a second goal in Murray. And here's a replay of it from the coverage on the Valley on ESPN. Murray, Kentucky, and Valparaiso takes a 2-1 to one lead. There's a very good reason there up near yeah. the top of the standings. Missouri State just got over on the Beacons 1-0 on October 2nd, and Valpo beat UIC 4-0. Haley Chambliss got that game-winning goal against Valparaiso.
So now if both of these matches stayed where they were, a Valpo win and a Missouri State tie, that would kind of leave the door open for Valparaiso. Yep, yep. John Stalling and I had that Valparaiso match two weeks ago. Under 35 to go here, second half. Placement here for Lauren Kaiser. She comes way out for the restart. Up oh, off of Mr. <laughs> Ellsworth. Sometimes you just can't avoid it. Can't get out of the way. <laughs> Since it hit him, they bring it all the way back okay. here. Brielle Gomez started, junior from Austin, Texas, holding, along with another player for UIC. Caitlin Montague. Okay. And they may send a third sub to check in here in a minute. Kaiser lets it fly. To the middle. Now the Flames working it. Long ball. <laughs> Had a pretty good angle on it, but there was Day. It just kept carrying back today. And you know, the wind was holding it uh -huh. up and, and pushing it a little higher here. Uh -huh. So when it left her foot, I didn't think it was going to be to where they would have to stretch out, but she did. Champ was down briefly. Still feeling it, but she's back up and now gets in the middle of the play here. She's been kind of quiet today. That is to say, we haven't seen her around the ball right. as much as usual. She had both goals at Southern Illinois, in addition to the game winner against Valparaiso and Indiana State. Now here comes a possible chance. There's Kaiser, and she grabs and hangs on. Flames can get something going in the middle here, but the Missouri State defense is not now. Kylie Jackson takes the ball and clears it to the near side, and here come a couple of subs for UIC. Brielle Gomez, Caitlin Montague, McKenna Shaw. Right. Montague has the throw in. Bear foul call, or a, no, UIC foul. turned and well wide to the right into our camera down there at the end. UIC up to 10 shots, four shots on goal. Bears three shots, only shot on goal by O'Keefe. As we mentioned, UIC has been more aggressive offensively here in the second half. Bella Bryson is in for the Bears. Placing Kaylee Benedict. 11 fouls on UIC and eight on the Bears. Get it in position at the top, but it's covered well. Now upfield is Brielle Gomez for the Flames. Oh, 
30 minutes left here in Springfield. And from what we have seen, no stoppages of the clock all day today. <laughs> Back heel pass. Mella Bryson had the move there and looked to get the ball back, but Flames turned it away. Back to the defensive line again for UIC, and they're up to the task once again. They're going to send it all the way back to Kaiser. No Bears attacking. Been almost a month since UIC lost a match. That was at Valparaiso on September 22nd. Flames started their season with four losses and two ties. Recovered nicely. Lost to Louisville and DePaul. Then to Miami of Ohio and Eastern Kentucky with... Ties to Eastern Illinois and Marquette in the middle of those. Missouri State upfield. Ooh, oh, what a great nearly. defensive play by UIC. Lexi Diaz. Stopping that Missouri State attack. Haley Chambliss with the ball now for the Bears. Nobody there to receive that one. The goal kick. So there was the attempted pass chance. by Fosno, yeah. Madison Ferris is in, and that might have been offside. Okay. Jade Loftness also coming in from Missouri State. For UIC, through 13 matches, 21 different players have attempted at least one shot. 10 of the 20 are in their first year of action at UIC. That's six freshmen, two redshirt players, and two transfers. Possible opportunity. Up field for UIC. The Bears get back on defense. Good footwork by McKenna Shaw. She's working a corner here, but uh, let's see. Yes. Did get the corner kick. Gabby Couch was the Missouri State defender there. So here it comes for the Flames. 26-20 left to go. On its way. Back into the center. Header. And right at the front door again. And there's Day. <laughs> With Shaw staying clear of her to avoid a foul. there just in case. Eleven shots, five shots on goal for UIC, and again, Missouri State only three shots and one shot on goal. Around the Valley, SIU with a lead over Illinois State in the second half. Offside on the Flames.
Diaz leading UIC in minutes played. She's played the entirety of 10 matches, averaging 84 minutes per match. Under 25 to go. That's a rejected and comes right back to Kylie Jackson and she'll back it up today. We'll turn it up this near side of the field. to the ball. Their defender goes down but stays in the way there to stay in the path of a possible cross. Good, oh, pass. good pass. Here it comes. Missouri State. The defenders spread out. Now everybody catches up. That originally was Loftness with the pass to Gracie English. Loftness down toward the corner. Good defensive coverage again. Wow. Abby Hanson, Riley Smith waiting to check in for Missouri State. And Grizzik waiting to check in for the Flames. We'll start to see both coaches try to get some fresh legs out there with under 23 minutes to play. Still looking for that elusive first goal. Scoreless minutes keep adding up for Lauren Kaiser. 350 plus at the start of play. Coming through and offside. Second time in just the last minute or so they've been called for offside. Look at Andy Ellsworth. Day gets it on the spot. Here we go with 22 minutes to go. Good call, good call, ref. Flame went down there. Foul called on Abby Couch. You can see how that would have warranted a whistle. Kaiser is out nearly to midfield for this one. Kicking into the wind. Up, there's a shot. Day is in the way. Rejects it straight out where it came from. Another good look for UIC. Well, they're better looks in the second half. Riley Smith is in for the Bears. Abby Hansen as well. Hannah Grizzick for UIC. And Grace Haynes. Missouri State shutting out Indiana State 1 0 on Thursday night. Bears have only given up goals in two out of their last nine contests. Again, that includes eight conference matchups. Kylie Jackson played the full 90 minutes in the last seven consecutive games. And again, on Thursday, both the second and third place teams in the Valley, Valparaiso and Southern Illinois, suffered losses at the hands of Missouri State earlier in the season.
20 minutes left. Nothing in the net yet in Springfield. At Allison South Stadium, named for the great Missouri State benefactor Bobby Allison, who passed away in September. Betty is Bobby's mother, who he credited with all of his success of raising him as a single mom. So she always gets top billing on his projects. <laughs> now, UIC contending for a call here, but Missouri State is going to get a corner. Yes, indeed. This was close both ways. Yeah, who got the last yeah. piece of uh -huh. it there? Could have been Loftness. It's just the second corner kick for Missouri State today. Placed by O'Keefe. Here it comes for the Bears. Right in front, and the catch by Kaiser. That's what Camille Day did in the first half in almost the same spot. David Nikolic yelling out encouragement. Back to work with 18 minutes to go. If these scores both hold of this match in Murray State Valparaiso and Valpo ahead two to one in that one, then at the end of the day, Missouri State would still be ahead of Valparaiso by one point in the standings, 20 points to 19. But Valparaiso has again played one fewer match, right? In the right. Valley play, yeah. So they would have two left after today to the Bears one still have a chance to catch them and pass them in sure. the standings, even though Missouri State won the head-to-head -head matchup 1-0. Right. Valparaiso could get a possible six points with two wins in their remaining matches. There's a Missouri State player down. That's Gabby Schlapper. And this is our first stoppage yeah. of the day. Take a look at Schlapper. She has one shot that was on goal in the match today. Says she's good to go. Start now for Lauren Kaiser. A little too much in there, a foul called on Missouri State. And here comes O'Keefe yeah. from the left. Happy handsome there on defense. Into the top of the box area for UIC, but the Bears are covering. Oh, now a chance for the Flames. Shot deflected. Back up field for Missouri State. Cleared off for a Bear throw in. Nothing wrong 
with UIC doing that. Lexi Diaz just allowing her defense to get set by doing that. Another bear was down for a moment. Bella Bryson. She is back up and we play on. Here comes O'Keefe. Shot. And it's a little high and a little right. It's the sixth shot of the afternoon by Missouri State. Second for O'Keefe. Fifteen minutes to play. Still in search of our first goal of this match. Bryson couldn't quite hang on there. Better is right back out as UIC brings it upfield. Front of Coach David Nikolic. Megan Bowman back in for Grace Haynes. Bowman, one of the eight goals scored this year for the Flames. Jamie again leading the way with three. Frerichs two. Right into the near post there. And they had the play. Rizik Bowman Shaw all oh, with one goal. Little little footwork here. Hold on. <laughs> and they'll. Stop the clock for it. <laughs> Let's look in on Valparaiso Murray State. Still two to one Valpo with 15 minutes to go there. And a free kick there. Valparaiso looking to make up some ground if they can hang on to win this one and Missouri State ends up in a draw. Back at it here in Springfield with 14 left. This will carry on and be stopped by Kaiser. She dives on it. Riley Smith bearing down on her. Haley Benedict, Edie Arue. Ready to check in for Missouri State, along with Gracie English. Now here come those subs. For the Flames, Frankie Frericks. Sometimes through all this, you just need a fresh set of legs. About to hit the stretch run here in Springfield and look for any goal that could take it today. Be creative, flicks, takeovers, give and go, creative runs. To the top center for the Bears. Back out to O'Keefe. Around to the right it comes. Long shot hits a defender and comes the other way. This will be guided out for a Missouri State throw in. 12 minutes to go. Back up Missouri State for the throw in. And another here now for Missouri State.
on its way as offside is called. Camille Day will restart with 11 minutes left. Riley Collette, Sophia Jamie waiting to check in. Credit to UIC here in the second half. The Bears have had the advantage of having the wind at their back for the most part, but really wouldn't know it as aggressively as UIC's been offensively. Benedict with a pass. Through toward the corner. Shot is just above and on by. We see English trying to find an open teammate in front of the net. Shot by English. And much on it. Ten minutes left. As you check the result sheet for Missouri State, they have played just one scoreless draw all year, and that was their season opener against Central Arkansas on August 18th. UIC has played three ties that were scoreless, Eastern Illinois, Belmont, and Northern Iowa. Could we be heading for that again here today? This one kind of squared up, but not quite in position. Bring it back to Kaiser. And out the far side. 13 shots for UIC, six shots on goal. Bears, six shots, only two shots on goal. Twelve fouls on the Flames, eleven fouls on the Bears. Missouri State just two corner kicks in the match. UIC is at six. Yeah. toward the corner for the Flames. And there is Day. Under eight minutes to play. All it takes is one. One either way should be enough today. The way this has looked. Coach David Nikolic there. Throw in for Jenna Anderson. Field for the Bears. And a chance and a shot off the top bar. Rebounded and into the net for Missouri State. With the keeper out of position and the Flames are pointing fingers. Chambliss apparently with the goal. It appears to be good. The call stands and the Bears get the goal. Off the top here and then the keeper's out of position and Chambliss off the defender, nothing they could do there. The 
Missouri State jumps on top. Chambliss had game winners against Valparaiso and Indiana State. Might be her third game winner if the Flames fail to score in the next seven minutes. Oh, a different game now. Missouri State now looks to get its position for a regular season title much more aligned. Whistle here from Andy Ellsworth and a flame is down. Stopped at 621 left. And a call for a sub. Riel Gomez will come out. A nice round of applause from the folks here in Springfield. And with that, I mean, David Nikolic is giving an earful to Andy Ellsworth. He is not going to like the end result of this. Andy can explain all he wants, but he is not going to like it. Okay. Clock stop, 621 left. Listen, listen, hey, talk to me. We'll restart here at midfield. the defenders back a step or two and then they come right back in. UIC will end up with a throw in here. Don, it was just this past Thursday night in the 12th minute, a shot by Joey Fosno deflected off the crossbar and within the minute, Abby Couch got possession, fed it to Chambliss who got the goal. Of there and then a miss hit ball will give Missouri State the goal kick. So Chambliss now taking the lead in goal scored for Missouri State with her fifth. Isabel Burke, the transfer from St. Louis University, is in. Five and a half minutes to play. Can't rest if you're Missouri State. You know UIC will go all out here in the final five. Cleared off toward midfield. Think about all the great teams that Rob Brewer had here during his coaching career when he started the program in 1996 through 2021. Never having won a Missouri Valley Conference regular season title. Lots of second place finishes. Important match coming up. October 23rd when the Bears go to Illinois State. That's an Illinois State team that's 0-6 with one tie. And currently in the bottom of the standings. A win here and a win there would give yes. Missouri State the title, I guess, unless that, I mean, it'd give them at least a share. Valparaiso's got the one more game left. But and Missouri State has the tiebreaker because they the beat tie Valparaiso breaker. head to head, yep. Another foul. Still could be the same record. Four minutes to go, still 2-1 Valparaiso in Murray. And now a free kick from 
out front here for UIC, and that's swatted out of there by Day. She went down pretty hard, and a foul is called in there. And Day is down. Thumbs up coming from the players. They say she's okay. So Day, two-hand punch, wow, got takes from a both hit. Sides. Yeah. Kylie, get them together. Down to 339. Day is up. UIC players all getting a drink of water, Gatorade, whatever it may be. Stay hydrated here. Not a hot day, temperature in the 60s. Let's look in on Valparaiso and Murray State. They're down to the final 205. Valparaiso with the two to one lead. And Murray in more of a hurry here now. Well, for these Missouri State seniors. Ooh, right in there. In their final home match of the regular season, they were honored in pregame ceremonies. You know what it would mean for them to win their final home regular season match. Which improved us 6-3-1 at home this season. You hear Coach Nikolic yelling out instructions to his team from the sideline. Sense of urgency for the Flames increasing by the second. Throw in coming for UIC. They put the foot on the gas a little harder here. Montague ready for the throw. Header off, and that will send us the other way. Goal kick for the Bears with 2.40 left. Camille Day, another day to remember. <laughs> so that goal by Chambliss ending that long streak of minutes played with out Kaiser giving up a goal. Put the ball to its spot here for the Bears. Down to two minutes. Final now in Murray and Valparaiso wins over Murray State, two to one. So here for a few seconds, <laughs> Valpo is going to be tied at six one and one with Missouri State, but the Bears are this close. They're adding another to their win total, and now the clock will be stopped at one twenty six with a flame and down a and a yellow card out. That's on Chambliss. Okay. And Chambliss, ooh, with a little grip there. Now right into the box for UIC. All the Bears defense has to do here is just keep it out of the box. Subs coming in. And clock stopped at 115. Loftness in for the Bears. Strong throw.
Back out. Fair foul. Free kick chance with a minute to go for UIC. Clock running. Here it is for Montague. And uh, just off the side. And a whistle blew in there anyway. Bears will get it. Everyone coming up with their arms up. 30 seconds to go. Missouri State just wants to keep it away from the other end here now. And UIC are running out of seconds even to get it across midfield. That is going to do it. Missouri State with a late goal by Haley Chambliss is going to get the win in the first ever victory over UIC in the first meeting between the two. Missouri State wins 1-0 as the Bears improve to 10-5-2.